Bhavavatu Sahanao Bhunaktu Sahavirya Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu Mavid Vishadahai Aum Shanti 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 Namaste. So in this episode, we're going to finish up the topic on Ananda Maya Adhikarana. And just so I don't have to repeat again to establish the context, make sure that you watched the introduction to Ananda Maya Adhikarana and also the explanation of Shankara's commentary on Vedanta Sutra 1112. This is made four years ago. So now we're going to look into the rest of the sutras on this topic, this Adhikarana, and we're going to go into the source material in the Taittiriya Upanishad because it reveals a very important fact about Brahman. So first, let's look at the next two sutras. If it be said that Brahman is not spoken of as an independent entity in the passage on account of a word, tail, denoting a part, we reply, not so on account of abundance of terms denoting parts. The verse in question in the Taittiriya Upanishad, we read in the last video, and that is the concluding verse of several describing the five sheaths, Anamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manamaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, and finally, Anandamaya Kosha. Now, the opponent says that the Anandamaya Kosha is Brahman because it's full of bliss. That's what Anandamaya means. Maya, the suffix, which is not Maya, but Maya, short A's, means full of composed of, overflowing with. So this Anandamaya sheath is overflowing with bliss. And this is why the soul, the individual being, merges into it during deep sleep, sushupti. But this is not Brahman. At least this is not the highest Brahman, Parabrahman. This is still Brahman with qualities, Saguna Brahman. So Shankaracharya makes this distinction very carefully between the two. Next, and because Brahman is declared to be the cause of it, the self consisting of bliss, Brahman cannot be taken as a part of it. The passage says, the tail is Brahman. But Brahman is also described as the cause. So that means Brahman is the support of Anandamaya. It is not the thing itself. Anandamaya kosha is different. Moreover, that very Brahman, which has been referred to in the mantra portion, is sung in this Brahmana passage as the tale. The structure of the Vedas is that there's a prayer or instructions for a particular sacrifice. 
That's the mantra portion. Then there's the Brahmana portion, which explains it and gives the inner workings, the inner secrets, the esoteric side of it. So this passage comes from the Brahmana portion. So it cannot contradict what was explained in the mantra portion of the same Vedic passage. The Upanishads being extracts from the Vedas. Brahman, and not the other, the individual soul, is meant here on account of the impossibility of that assumption. Because earlier in the passage, the self consisting of bliss is said to be the creator of everything. So how can the creator of everything be just one part of the five sheaths, Ananda Maya Kosha? It's not possible. So the assumption that Brahman and Ananda Maya Kosha are identical is false. And finally, on account of the declaration of difference between the two, that is, the one referred to in the passage, the self consisting of bliss, etc., and the individual soul, the latter cannot be the one referred to in the passage. Shankara's commentary on the Sutra. That which is referred to in the passage, the self consisting of bliss, etc., is said to be rasa, the essence of flavor, attaining which the individual soul is blissful. The self consisting of bliss, etc., is rasa. Only after attaining rasa, this essence of flavor, is this soul blissful. Now, that which is attained and the attainer cannot be the same. So the individual soul is not referred to in that passage under discussion. So here again, he's referring to the actual uh, Upanishadic passage. Maybe we better take a look at it and read through it and see what gems we can discover in it. In the beginning, all this was but the unmanifested, Brahma. From that emerged the manifested. That Brahman created itself by itself. Therefore, it is called the self-creator. That which is known as the self-creator is verily the source of rasa, joy. For one becomes happy by coming in contact with that source of rasa. Who indeed will inhale and who will exhale if this bliss is not there in the supreme space within the heart? This one indeed enlivens people. For whenever an aspirant gets fearlessly established in this imperceivable, bodiless, inexpressible and unsupported Brahman, he reaches the state of fearlessness. For whenever the aspirant creates the slightest difference in it, he is smitten with fear. Nevertheless, that very Brahman is a terror to the so-called learned man who lacks the unitive outlook. So, this is the passage from Taittiriya Upanishad that is the basis of this whole Adhikaranam that the Ananda Maya Kosha is not the Brahman, but simply a part of the coverings of the individual soul. Nevertheless, it is related to Brahman. It is an effect of Brahman, the self-created, because it is full of bliss. And very significantly, this bliss is called rasa. Now, rasa means taste or flavor. And specifically, it is the flavor of the relationships between the individual soul and Brahman.
in any form. So therefore, this becomes the basis of bhakti. And this uh, shloka in the Taittiriya is quoted by many bhakti teachers, including my Adi Guru, as being the foundation of the science of rasa, or relationship with the Supreme. Let's take a closer look at the Sanskrit, just to uh, get totally clear on it. Raso vai saha rasang yevayam labdhanyandi bhavati. He himself is rasa, the taste or mellow of a particular relationship. And certainly, one who achieves this rasa becomes anandi, filled with bliss. So this is from the same passage of the Taittiriya. This rasa is the reason that we strive for self-realization. The rasa experienced in the Ananda Maya Kosha cannot be the final and highest rasa. Why? Because it's temporary. The koshas come into existence only around the individual, and the individual is created at a certain point of time. Therefore, he is not eternal. And the proof of this is that the individual can attain enlightenment, can attain self-realization. And at that time, he realizes this bliss of rasa, Rasa being the taste of his particular relationship with Brahman, the Supreme. So even if someone becomes a yogi and performs Raja Yoga and realizes emptiness, nothingness, Brahman, pure consciousness without an object, he has a specific relationship until he realizes his total identity with the Supreme. And that relationship is called neutrality. Neutrality could be described as distant, passive adoration. So the other relationships that one can have besides neutrality are servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. And this we have gone into in some detail in our series on Bhakti Bhava. So if you want to know more about it, check out that series. Meanwhile, this completes the description of the Ananda Maya Koshani Karanam of Vedanta Sutra. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.